Well, folks, here we are again, almost exactly four months after my February 2017 repair of the video card of this late 2009 iMac. And as you can see, what's happening here is it's freezing during boot, and this is exactly what it did uh, that caused me to have to open the Mac and put the video card in the oven, uh, which again worked for four months, almost exactly four months. And uh, what kind of usage? Well, my son would actually play Team Fortress, which is fairly heavy on the graphics card. And he had played a number of hours, actually, for many, many days uh, during those four months on this machine. I'm not sure if that contributed to the problem, but nevertheless, um, it happened. And again, that is with increased fan speed. I had all, all of the fans using fan control software set to 1800-1800 RPM. And uh, despite uh, the cooling, and again, this was February, so it was quite cold then. Uh, all the way until June, which um, it never really went beyond the 80s in Fahrenheit or above uh, about uh, 33 or so degrees centigrade. Um, still, this problem happened. So, uh, no matter how many times I restart it, I can restart it into, um, you know, what I'll do is I'll take it right now and hold the button down the, on the back left side until it shuts down. And then I'll wait a couple seconds here and then press the power button again. Okay, I just pressed it. And it will basically do the same thing. Sometimes sometimes it might show artifacts on the screen, like a, a horizontal line. But um, most of the time it just locks up. Now, if I hold down the shift key, yeah, see, you can see the horizontal lines now, right? You can see some artifacts on the screen. And here, he's trying to boot, but uh, you can see how everything's inverted. It's clearly a video card problem. Uh, and the computer is unusable. Only because of the video card. Everything else about this machine works fine. So um, I either need to abandon this machine or try another video card bake. And uh, that's all I can really do other than swap out the card. But if I pay money to swap out the card, I guarantee it's going to happen in another couple of years just because Apple swapped out the card on this machine uh, three years after purchase and it fixed the machine for about three years and then the same problem happened again. Uh, so uh, it seems to be that either the card itself is uh, defective at the factory the the inherent design of it or uh, something else again more artifacts strangeness and so here we are again folks uh, using my little suction cups here. We'll put this one on just like so. We've got them at both corners at the top. They need to be at the top, not on the bottom, to remove the front glass. And it takes uh, a little bit of force because there's magnets all the way around uh, the outside bezel. So we'll do that now. And it comes right off. Um, and the benefit of doing it on the soft surface, in this case a bed, is that uh, the iMac is laid down so you can use the weight of the iMac to more easily pull off the glass, which would be much more difficult if you were just, if the iMac was sitting upright. Well folks, I've got some good news, which is what you're looking at now. The display is out. And I've got some bad news. Uh, here's the back of the display and you can probably see a little something there on the ground. This, unfortunately, is what's left of the tip of the ribbon cable 
that attaches in the upper left side. How did this happen? The tip broke off because I had removed all of the screws and then I took it off the bed after removing the screws and set it upright and unfortunately the screen because of its weight and because I had the iMac straight up it fell forward. I was able to catch it but because this is so short it uh, had already I thought it had yanked out and was relieved but then I saw that it was uh, broken off and um, actually there are two pieces the little blue thing is the heavy or the hard support for it and then there's the gold contacts so uh, obviously no matter what I do with the video card it's not gonna work without this so I was thinking well is fate telling me to give up on this machine and then I said to myself am I going to allow fate to dictate my fate <laughs> well the answer is no um, I'm not giving up I'm a fighter so what that means is I can't repair this I mean reasonably no you're not gonna repair it you better just buy a new one where are you gonna buy a new one reasonably priced from the US search eBay search Amazon there's sharks everywhere trying to steal your money for this uh, flimsy cable that probably cost all of 10 cents so uh, I searched AliExpress and I've purchased things from them before and found uh, well it's fairly reasonably priced but you know before I formally placed my order for a replacement ribbon cable which by the way the thankfully the number is written on here uh, 593-1049-A and there's three there's two dashes in between so it's 593-1049-A while thinking about that I was thinking alright do I need to replace any other cables so naturally I was thinking about this cable here just because one of these little locks plastic locks it looks not necessarily broken but a little bit flimsy on the side and on top of that this part of the cable is all crinkled up I don't think that's contributing to the problem because obviously it lasted four months kind of in that smashed position and then three years <laughs> prior to that in a smashed position I don't think it's the cable but you know I said well since I'm already placing one cable uh, the one over here which connects by the way underneath this tape connects here and then to the uh, um, circuit board on the iMac at this end this cable underneath this tape has a similar connector here and it's uh, fairly easy to remove once you remove the tape and this one is a Foxconn brand it says uh, model number 593-1028 space B like boy so I looked that up on AliExpress and I found a couple sellers who actually provided both cables and you can actually see that on my iPhone here in the AliExpress app um, seller is MacTech store and they've got the thin little cable the one that I broke for 271 yen so if you say 100 yen to the dollar it's not that but it's pretty close two dollars and 71 cents roughly US and then the other cable you, you would expect it's going to be more expensive it's a much more complicated cable um, basically uh, 1,129 yen or eleven dollars 29 cents they have shipping shipping separate if you buy them separately but they uh, combine the shipping so that the total price of both of these cables with shipping to my address in Japan is 2,100 yen or about $21 so I mean in dollars actually the yen is weaker than the dollar now it's about 110 to the dollar so you'll get it for roughly uh, uh, 20 20 dollars because the shipping to the US is is the same on their on their site so um, I'm gonna have to wait for these cables to arrive um, before I can do anything I mean one of my cables like I said this cable is probably okay but nothing I can do until this cable is replaced and, um, and again this little four pin 
connector broken off cannot be easily repaired. So uh, in the meantime I can do the card bake uh, and do that but by the time you see this video you'll be able to see everything uh, from start to finish but for me right now I'm gonna have to wait until those parts from Ali Express arrive and that's probably gonna take a couple weeks because they're pretty slow. Okay so here we are with the video card again here if you watch my first video which is over an hour long you know that I removed all of the motherboard which includes the video card and the CPU attached to it some people said you don't have to do that look I know that but you actually do have to remove that entire logic board if you want to replace the button cell 2032 uh, battery that's on the opposite side there's no way you can get to the battery unless you take off the motherboard so my one hour video is still very important and honestly this is a 2009 iMac uh, batteries don't last forever so if you've never done the um, video card repair before then you should follow my first video and do it that way which is troublesome I will admit but by removing the motherboard you'll be able to see the battery connector on the other side it's impossible to get to it unless you remove the motherboard. So uh, you'll be able to watch that video and remove the motherboard, replace the battery, and do the job right. Plus, uh, I was able to clean the fans, and even after four months of use, uh, they're still fairly clean. I don't see any gooky stuff built up in it that, I, that required me to clean it now four months later. And I'm in a fairly dusty room, too. So um, that cleaning uh, looks like it, it lasts a while. Anyway. Today, we're not removing the motherboard because the battery on the other side is, is new. I replaced it four months ago. So all I'm going to do is replace, or actually remove, the video card from uh, the motherboard, which is here, here, here. These screws are keeping it mounted. And then you can see part of a connector here, but on the back side, there's another connector. That's where the video card slides in. And once these screws are removed, uh, in here, then I will be able to pull up and out. And uh, the screws, these three screws, are different from this screw, which goes up here. Okay, so you'll have to remember that this one is unique. Three screws down here, and the fourth one up here, but this one is unique. So to make the job easier, we should remove this connector. This connector is of the type that just pushes straight on, like that. Now, you cannot easily just take it off now because on the back, you see there's this there's the wire coming uh, out of it. So you have to take it out from the back, which is on not on the front, but on the back of the uh, motherboard. And that's a little tricky, so that's another reason why it's good if you take out the full motherboard, you don't have any guesses about how to take that little connector out. I mean, you can still do it. It's just that it's more complicated. And you've got other cables that are in the way here. That you need to move out of the way uh, to be able to accomplish it. And you might even need a little tool to help you do that. Okay. Actually, it wasn't the tool, it was my thumbnail that finally helped to get it out. It's probably actually a lot easier to get it out than it is to put it back in again, but basically it is almost directly behind the LCD temperature connector here. So here we are with the video card heatsink. 
which needs to be removed before we bake. There's springs under here. So you can hear that. see that the one, two, three, four screws go into this little gizmo there. Also another Torx on this side too. By the way, I'm using a Torx uh, T9 screwdriver. And these two Torx screws are very short short little screws and and they are different than the other two torques that I removed so you have to remember that the short ones are the ones that go here with little spikes on the heat sink So, with this little bracket, there's going to be those four longer torque screws. And you can see that screw there, which is going to the plate on the back. The video card can be removed without doing any of that, though. And here's how the video card looks once removed with um, this was after four months you can see that the Arctic Silver there has spilled over as I thought and um, if I take a good look at it it's just barely coming in contact with some of the SMD parts. Nothing up here, very close, but hasn't touched it. This, I just now removed it, so you can see a little stringy part here. But uh, it wasn't touching the SMD before. Here, it might have. Here it was pretty close, but it didn't, it didn't quite touch that. This, it looks like it's just barely touching. Anyway, the reason I mention this is because the Arctic Silver 5 I used is conductive. So you don't want it to get on these capacitors here. Um, could that have been the source of the problem? I'm not sure. But um, what I decided to do this time is make absolutely sure that it gets the best cooling possible. So I'm going to clean it all off and then replace the thermal pads. Um, not with pads, but with an equivalent thick thermal paste that apparently is made in Greece. I'm surprised it's not getting as much press or reviews as it should be. I guess this video will serve as a review of it. But um, 
I have that on order, actually. It's supposed to arrive uh, later today. I was able to order it through Amazon Japan, and I also see it's on Amazon US and other places, too. So anyway, um, by the way, just to comment, the white paste you see here is non-conductive. So even though it's spilled over terribly on those chips, that doesn't matter because it is not a conductive paste. The only conductive paste I used was the Arctic Silver 5, uh, which you see here. So now it's a matter of me cleaning it off, and I will use dehydrated ethanol, which is uh, just a form of alcohol, and um, use swabs like I did last time. Last time it took about 10 swabs, both sides, plus the dehydrated ethanol to do it. But this time I will also uh, clean off these, uh, whatever is left of the pads uh, on the heatsink. So to clean off the heatsink, you really do need to remove the screw here and separate it from the base plate so that it's free to access. And here is yet another little screw, which is unique amongst all of them that we removed. And then you'll be able to more easily gain access to the bottom of the heatsink and clean off all of this. Um, you shouldn't um, really reuse paste. It's best to reapply the stuff even if it takes more time and costs a little bit more money. And again, when I first did this four months ago, I left the pads on there, but I applied more thermal paste, um, which we can see here, it sort of made contact. How much contact, I don't know. But it was enough to keep the temperature stable throughout all those times. I honestly don't think it was my application of the paste uh, that caused this recurrence of the problem four months later. It may have just been I didn't bake it long enough or I don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean, why does the bake really work? You know, some people argue that it shouldn't work, but actually it does. So I'm not sure why it works. My guess is it will work this time too, but will it only be four months or will it be longer? Um, a guy who inspired me to do this, he was reporting 17 months of use in February 2017, which is what inspired me to do it, I said, hey, if he, he can last 17 months, why can't I? Now, then the, the question now becomes, why did mine only last four months? I don't know. I don't know, but I've already gotten this far, so I'm going to keep going. Well, here is my handiwork, and it took, I didn't time it, but well over 30 minutes, that's for certain, to clean off the heat sink and the card. The card was more difficult to clean this time because I applied a lot of the white liquid paste on the memory chips and that had you know fallen over and I wanted to get it as clean as possible it's not a hundred percent perfect you can still see maybe a half a millimeter of white outline around each chip that I simply couldn't do but I used um, a combination of tissues and swabs first the tissues just to wipe it off to get the majority of the gunk off and um, then I put some of the dehydrated um, ethanol on, um, you, know, you probably can't read it unless you're Japanese, but it says uh, no water ethanol, right? So dehydrated. And um, we use this stuff at the office. It, it works well to clean uh, electronic circuit boards. Anyway, that's what I used um, after I, a, a dry tissue wipe down. Then I put some of that ethanol on the tissue and then did another wipe down. And then I did the meticulous cleaning with my swabs. And I must say that this took a lot of work. Um, even after I had done the tissue, wiped down the tissue plus ethanol, and then started to do it with the swabs, it took a lot of swabs. And even after it looked clean, when I started to really scrub on it, uh, I was still getting like this, as black as as the night. <laughs> this type of dirt and gunk on the swabs. And so I just kept putting the ethanol on the swabs and kept doing it and doing it until the swabs came clean. And finally it's off. So I guess in the microscopic or the little teensy tiny crevices of this, there was still some of that paste and the ethanol reacting with it turned it black, I guess. But anyway, it's cleaned off. I cleaned off this section, this section, this section, and then there's a little, um, this square guy goes will fit here. 
I cleaned off this. This was the hardest because this area is not smooth. This, 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 and of course that are very smooth surfaces, but down here, it's not smooth at all. It's very, you can see it with the naked eye, how the hills and valleys, it's very gritty down there. But I did my best and, and cleaned that to have it as clean as possible. So uh, what I'm going to do now is, I, since I have the little, this little, uh, whatever it's called thing, removed, I'm going to put this in the oven and this time I'm going to do it at the same temperature, which everybody recommends. I don't know why they recommend 200 degrees Celsius, but they do. And again, it worked for me at least for four months. So I'm going to use the same temperature, but instead of nine minutes, I'll do 10 minutes this time. Some people recommended 10. Last time I said that, you know, my other video, I said that people, some people said seven minutes, some said, uh, some said eight, eight minutes and some said 10 minutes. And, uh, so I chose the average and, and uh, did nine last time. This time I'm doing 10 minutes in the oven. And we'll see how it goes. So here we are the last few seconds. And once again, I did this for 10 minutes and it's just now finishing. And this is how it looks on the inside of the oven. You can see I've got it suspended with four pieces of foil kind of shaped like a little volcano with the pointed tips and the tips are fitted inside screw holes and that way it will securely hold the board um, but at the same time it won't press against any surface mount components on the bottom of the board and here it is freshly baked AMD cookies or well video card uh, just to show you the top view, um, I have a pointed piece of foil here, 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 and then at this upper right screw hole point. And I found that's the best stability um, to keep it that way. Even if your oven vibrates a little bit, it didn't move around. It stayed rock solid on there. And you can see kind of how far apart. I had the the base of the um, of each foot. Well, here is the thermal paste that I ordered last night. Um, thanks to Amazon Prime, it arrived today. And here it is with the wrapping taken off. We open it up. We see we've got actually two K5 Pro and K4 Pro. Thank you from Greece. Okay, and the um, these two chapstick guys here are the K5 Pro which is the replacement for the thermal pads and this is the K4 Pro which will go on the GPU and I'm going to use this even though some may argue that Arctic Silver 5 is superior this is superior in terms of not being conductive none of these neither of these uh, are conductive so even if there's overspill it won't matter because it won't conduct. So here is the baked uh, for 10 minutes at 200 degrees centigrade AMD graphics card. I put back on that little fuzzy soft thing around it first. Um, if you watch my other video you saw I tried to do it last and it was a problem for me. Either way it's going to be a problem because there's no more sticky stuff. <laughs> the two-sided tape is still there but it doesn't have much stick anymore so this part over here is coming up a little bit in any case um, when you open the K5 Pro chapstick it looks like chapstick and um, you roll it out pretty much uh, in the same way as you do chapstick and you just stick it on now I've never used this stuff before but again this um, is supposed to be a substitute for the thermal pads so it'll go over one two three four five six seven eight chips plus one two three four these back here and um, then we will put that on the seat heat sink and see how it goes and then of course the K4 Pro I will be applying to the GPU
Okay, I know what you're thinking. This really breaks every rule you read about putting thermal paste on, but again, the level of these chips is much lower than these square things, and there was a lot of thick... Um, the thermal pads that Apple had put on there were quite thick because the these chips are so low they wouldn't touch the heat sink, and so this extra goo is taller, but supposedly... Uh, it's made for this to be used two or three millimeters in height so I brought the level of this goo up to the same level as this up here and um, so we'll consider that K5 Pro to be finished and now put the K4 Pro on the GPU now the K4 Pro does not need to be applied as liberally as the K5 Pro because the heatsink will come right down on top of this. It's not thermally conductive so spillover will be fine but um, we can use this much more sparingly. And actually that's probably way too much already. Now some people put a pea-sized drop and actually that's a little bit more than a pea size and then let it spread out um, but um, I don't know if I want to do that okay and then I'll apply a little bit on the other um, on the heatsink side just a little tiny bit and then it'll spread out and spill over and it will be fine Okay, now comes the hard part of putting them both together. It's barely touching with the thermal adhesive um, on top of the, the square chip. Anyway, it um, seems like I put a lot on, but um, it seems to have just made the right amount of contact. And now that the heat sink is on, we just screw back down the three screws here, here, here to put on the metal frame. And now it's ready to be put back in the iMac. Fairly straightforward. The trickiest part of it all is this guy. This uh, uh, temperature sensor connector here, which has to, it's keyed, so it'll only go in one way, but still, the connector's on the back side of the motherboard, and, uh, you know, we had a little trouble getting it out, and getting it back in is usually on order of two to three times more difficult, but we'll see what, what goes on. Um, the connector 
you can see on the connect well you can't see it in the video but on the connector there's two pins where the pins are visible side and then the opposite side is just black plastic so you need the pins visible side going up okay so those two pins if you're looking down on those two pins they will be um, facing up and then the connector will connect in uh, towards you that way so we'll have to connect it first before we can do anything else and then once that's done then this the gold contacts will have to be properly inserted on the other side and uh, then we'll be able to screw it down Before I secure the motherboard, one thing I should say, which I didn't say in my other video, is that before you put the screws down in tight, the motherboard screws I mean, you want to make sure that you feel with your hand on the back of the Mac and make sure the ports are lined up. If they're off by a millimeter or so, you'll find it's difficult to put in connectors. So, I will feel in the back. In the back, I've got a USB, or yeah, it's a USB wireless module for my Logitech solar keyboard. And I just use this to make sure it's all lined up. There's uh, four USB connectors on the back, and just plug it in, make sure it'll go in smoothly in all four connectors. The far one towards this way is having some trouble. That seems to have done it. So I'm holding it in place with my finger down here while I tighten the screws. So we've got it put back together. My ports on the back are all straightened out and uh, the USB connectors can go in just fine. Everything's screwed down tight and I'm really mad at myself for letting the display fall forward and bust off that cable because I had to order new and have to wait for it to arrive. Uh, otherwise I could be putting it back together and testing it. But anyway, once those uh, cables uh, arrive, again, I ordered two. One that goes here and then the other one uh, that goes here because it's kind of crinkled up. Um, then I will continue this video and we'll see if the second bake works. And if it does, then it'll be a matter of how many weeks, months, or hopefully years <laughs> will that one last. And here it is, after about, uh, well, an almost two-week wait, 
Uh, interestingly enough, shipped from Singapore rather than China. Let's open it and see what's inside. Filled to the brim with thick packing material. Looks like it's, well, very fragile, but good quality stuff. Has the two-sided tape, at least on the small cable. So let's put it on the iMac. Okay, back of the display. Here's the Foxconn stock cable. So we will remove him. Here's the replacement. And again, I'm replacing it not necessarily because it's bad, but this is all crinkled up. So I was thinking, well, might as well just replace it since I had to replace this one anyway. And uh, so, and I heard a little snap. So he's snapped in there. There's the tape going over, and then this guy, you just slide him out. Okay, and this has tape here. I'm not sure if I, I know this has two-sided tape too, but um, this tape actually makes it shorter. So I might decide not to use the tape at all to make it longer. And maybe if it didn't have the tape, it probably wouldn't have broken. So I think I'll just forego putting on the tape. Um, it doesn't matter which side you put in, they, they're both, right? You just have to make sure that the pin side is going down. It feels like it's in there. Okay. So now we plug him in and see what happens. So we're ready to plug everything in. Um, there's going to be the connector, one of the new connectors, or uh, the new cables that I bought will plug in here. There's also the small connector that has to be plugged back in here. And then there are the final two connectors, which will go here and up here. All right, here we are. The screen's connected and back on for good measure so there's no more accidents. I put one screw back in so that way no matter how it's tilted the screen's not going to fall forward and i don't have to wait another week and a half for new cables to arrive it's plugged in we'll just turn it on see if we have victory or failure And what do you know? There it goes. So even a second bake works. <laughs> My little snitch is telling me something here, so I'll go ahead and allow that. Uh, wow. 
It's uh, working yet again, folks. So why did my first bake only last four months? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, again, the re only reason I tried it is because another guy on YouTube said he had been going strong for 17 months after his bake and never had a problem. So that was the inspiration for me to try it. And it worked for four months. And then, as you saw at the beginning of this video, it had the same problem again. So I'm not sure. Um, I don't really think it had to do with the thermal paste. Maybe I didn't bake it long enough. This time it was 10 minutes. We'll find out. And I will give an update in the comment section or the description under this video for everyone to see. But as you can see, uh, it boots. We'll go ahead and um, uh, do a restart. It's booting into guest mode right now, which is why I said delete files. I'll do a restart and just show you that <clears throat> everything's in proper working order. But, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm confident that this second bake has done its job simply because uh, the computer would not have booted to the desktop if the problem had remained. And you saw at the beginning of this video that it froze the, once you see this screen right here, it would freeze about that, the halfway point. And then sometimes there would be uh, vertical lines, uh, not vertical, but horizontal lines on the screen. We're not seeing any of that now. It's going past the midway point, it boots to the desktop. So again, uh, we see that it is working. It is working. And so there you have it, folks. Uh, you can truly bake your video card more than once. And how long this will last? Well, again, I'm going to have to report back on that. But um, the only last thing I can leave you with is this. When you do this, make sure you are careful uh, not to let the screen fall forward when you're taking it off. Otherwise, you're going to snap off one or more of the cables and you're going to have to buy them. But the good news is you can buy them and uh, it seems like AliExpress uh, does a good job, at least from the seller that I showed you before. Uh, they fulfilled their end of the bargain and sent me two very good cables. As you can see, there's no anomalies on the screen. The screen looks very beautiful. I don't see any uh, noise or, or anything wrong with it at all. So both of those cables were uh, excellent cables, perfect replacements for the factory cables. Anyway, I hope this video uh, is helpful. To those of you who are experiencing problems and uh, best wishes to one and all.